Everybody and welcome to my first Q&A video. Uh, the channel has been growing a lot in the past month and I figured it was time to answer some of you all's questions uh, that you've posted in the, in the comments, in the Discord, on Twitter, and just have a little bit more interaction kind of, um, I don't know, a little more informally with the community. So I've got around 20 or so uh, questions uh, that I'm going to try to get to in this video with topics that are kind of all over the place from questions about me personally, directions of the channel, uh, random Wheel of Time book questions, and some questions about uh, what I think is going to happen on the show. Uh, before we start answering all of your questions, I wanted to take a minute and give you guys some quick updates on the channel what my plans are for the future with the channel, and to let you guys know why I'm even doing this in the first place. So I started this channel basically because I'm, I'm just a huge fan of the series, and ultimately there just wasn't much YouTube content uh, out there to feed my wheel of time addiction. <laughs> uh, I read, I've read the series more than 20 times now. I know that's crazy. Uh, but I've been a fan of the series since I was in high school. I've always been real active on the on the forums and online communities that have been a part of the Wheel of Time series over the over the years. But I thought I could fill a gap in the community on YouTube. Uh, I'm certainly not a professional or anything, as some of you have noted in the comments. But I wanted to create some content that would spark discussion and debate, reignite passion in the books, and prepare people for the upcoming show, and ultimately help point other folks who haven't read the books to this amazing book series and hopefully get them to give it a shot. I know if you're like me, you've begged your friends to pick up the books and read them uh, just because you wanted somebody to talk about the series with, and that's kind of why I wanted to do this. Which basically leads me to the next stage. I intended originally just to casually do this and occasionally make videos, but as the channel has grown in popularity, I really want to keep some of you diehard fans satisfied with new content every couple days. Um, ideally, I'd be releasing a full-length video every day. Uh, but that's really just not a reality for me. Um, I have a fairly demanding small business that I'm trying to grow right now, uh, in addition to trying to grow this channel. And it takes me roughly 8 to 10 hours per video from the brainstorming phase to the research to writing a script and then ultimately recording and editing. Um, it takes me about that long to get a video out. Now, I'm certainly going to keep going as much as I can because I really do enjoy this, but I wanted to give those of you that uh, want to have more input in what I'm doing the ability to kind of speak to me more directly to help me grow the community of the channel. I wanted to give you guys a place to do that. And that's why, as I announced at the end of the last video, uh, I've started a Patreon page uh, to allow all of you to be a part of what I'm doing. If you feel like you want to support what I'm doing here, please take a minute and check out my Patreon link in the description and consider financially supporting the growth of the channel. Even one dollar donations really go a long way and it just blows my mind that anybody wants to spend money to hear me talk. Uh, but <laughs> if that is you, I, I truly do appreciate it. Uh, we've got some cool tier rewards, and I'm going to give you guys a lot more access to my process, little bits of me throughout the day. Like, they have a cool feature called Lens where you can kind of, it sounded like Snapchat, but you can see what I'm doing. And I really want to give you guys input into the direction of the channel and what videos I make. But in terms of the direction of the channel, this is actually a question I received, and I thought I'd address it here. I want to start committing to getting videos out on a regular schedule. And so for me, that's my, my plan is Sunday mornings and Wednesday afternoons. If we can squeeze in another video in in the week, I'm going to try to do that. But that's going to be my, my posting schedule going forward. Crossing my fingers, or both. But without further ado, let's jump into the q and I'll start by throwing up a spoiler warning. Uh, I'm going to split this video into two sections, and there will be a non-spoiler section with a rating of green, meaning this first part is going to have no spoilers of any kind. So feel free to watch without fear of having anything in the book series at all spoiled for you. They'll be very general. And then later, I'm going to throw up another spoiler warning when we reach the spoilers section. So let's go ahead and kick it off with a question from Smullyan. Hopefully I'm not butchering that. Smullyan says... Did you say you had a Discord for Wheel of Time? And to answer this one quickly, yes I do. If you join on even the smallest tier on my Patreon, you'll automatically receive an invite to the server, and I am super active there. I love engaging in conversations, and that is the best way to communicate with me, that and, and Twitter. You'll be able to, I'll talk with you one-on-one. -on -one. It's, it's a pretty awesome place, and so if you want that, please, you know, by all means, get be a part of that. 
With our next question, Ryan Ratchford asks, would you ever think about doing an expansive, comprehensive exploration of the magic system? I've seen many talk about it in general, and I guess he wants to see some detail there. So the short answer to this is absolutely yes. I have a long list of videos I'd like to make, and a deep dive here is certainly one of them. I actually have kind of a, a very tentative plan to break it up into a bunch of different sections, because that is a huge topic. Um, Wheel of Time has one of the biggest magic, or most expansive magic systems in all of fantasy. One of the things I love about it, actually. Uh, so we we'll certainly have that as a plan. Now, if you want your itch scratched for that right now, Daniel Green has an exceptional video on that topic. I will have a link to that down in the description. And just along those lines, Jesus Rios asks, what other channels do you watch that that's Wheel of Time related? And your content is top notch. Love your spoiler warning system. Well, first of all, thank you for your kind words, Jesus. Um, and there is really only other uh, one other consistent Wheel of Time creator that I know of, and that's Daniel Green. I imagine many of you have heard of him already. He has a channel dedicated primarily to fantasy books, reviewing them and talking about them. But he spends a good amount of time on Wheel of Time as it's his favorite book series. So if you haven't given him a subscribe um, and watched all of his videos, make sure you finish this one first, then go and watch all of my other videos, uh, and then go watch all 10,000 of his. He releases like every day. But there are a couple other sources of Wheel of Time content that I'll point you guys to if you need to, uh, again, scratch more of your itch there. I recommend watching, uh, there's a, a fan fiction short film called Flight from Shadow. Uh, it's a fairly high quality adaptation of a portion of the eye of the world. Um, I'll have a link to that video down in the description as well. It really is really good, guys. Uh, the Daily Trollic is a website produced by Narg, who, if you're in the Wheel of Time community at all, he's kind of a staple of the online Wheel of Time community. He's uh, he's basically the spokesman for the Wheel of Time community. Um, Narg does excellent work and has been scooping news on the upcoming TV series, you know, getting news out there before anybody else. So uh, give Narg a follow on Twitter and certainly check out The Daily Trollic. I'll have a link to both his Twitter and the Daily Trolloc uh, website down in the description. And Dragon Mount is the main website that features Wheel of Time fan forums and a lot of cool content. Make sure you check that out as well. Again, links in the description. There are also a couple of outstanding podcasts currently running as well with the White and Black Tower podcast. There are definitely more places to feed your addiction that I probably missed, but uh, if I did miss any good ones, make sure to comment down below so that we can all check them out. So given that most of the questions that I got were pretty spoiler filled, uh, we're going to move away from the spoiler free section now and go on to the spoiler section. Let me throw up a spoiler rating of red. The rest of this video going forward is going to carry a spoiler rating uh, of red, meaning content all the way up through the final book will be spoiled. If you want to watch further, make sure you watch at your own risk. So first up in our spoiler section, we have, actually have three separate questions I'm going to answer all at once. Joshua T asks, when were they first mentioned, referring to the Sharans? Were they a very late addition by Sanderson? And then Rachel Leffler asks, didn't Grendel have Sharan slave? She was the best villain, the real hedonist. Funny though how the most exposition I remember getting about Shara in the main story, not the glossary, is Grendel bragging about her exotic slaves. And Nicole R asks, I knew about Grendel but not about the slave uprising. Where did all of that information come from? I need to do some research. Well, let me go ahead and address all of these. The Sharans are mentioned throughout the series, dating back as far as Lord of Chaos, when, as Rachel mentioned, Grendel had captured the two rulers of Shara and made them her pets. This is what indirectly sent the Sharan nation into civil war and allowed Demon Dread to unite them behind him. Uh, in regards to where this information comes from, you can catch a lot of it in A Memory of Light, but also there is a short story called The River of Souls, which features Demon Dread's quest to obtain the Sakarnan, a real powerful song real. Uh, you can see the whole story from his point of view and get some interesting insight to what he had been up to. River of Souls is a part of the Unfettered Anthology. It's a series of short stories from various best-selling authors. It was a fundraiser for cancer. I'll have a link down in the description below where you can purchase the anthology if you want to read it. The short story is really just deleted content from a memory of light. If you haven't seen it already, make sure to check out my video doing a deep dive into everything you could ever want to know about Shara. Again, links in the description. Vobo vo... Borian, I probably butchered that, asks, uh, he may get a 25 out of 25, again referring to Rand in our Channelers of the Light video, but can he beat Goku? <laughs> well, I, I am certainly no expert on Goku, um, but I do know this, Balefire is the ultimate power, and I am not sure how Goku defends himself from being erased from existence. Dragon Ball Z people, hate on me all you want. Mark Lintz asks, who's a more powerful channeler, Luz Theron Telamon or Randall Thor? 
Same person, but in different agents. Who do you think? So this is a super interesting question. Uh, in regards to who can draw more of the power, I'd say that they're actually equal. Um, Rand may not have reached his full potential until most of the way through the story, but once he did, they were the same soul and had equal ability in the power from a strength standpoint. So they're both basically regarded as the most powerful channeler that a man could be. Now, prior to his epiphany on Dragon Mount in The Gathering Storm, Rand was far less experienced and mostly relied on Luz there in his head to help him when he didn't know what to do. Rand was never trained and most of his skill came from remembering through a voice in his head so I would say at this point in the stories clearly Luce Theron has some advantage there. After the personalities merged in the veins of gold chapter in a gathering storm I would now say that it's Rand and I say this because he has full knowledge of what Luce Theron once had but then and all of his weaving experience but now also what he's learned in this age so I, I would think at this point he's probably more powerful. Now here we have a question from the Discord and the Badger, who I promised I would give a shout out to. So shout out to you, the Badger. But he asks, who do you think the, the two biggest characters who get cut from the show will be? So this is actually a topic I'm going to be addressing in an upcoming video in my series about the upcoming Wheel of Time television show. We have three episodes of that out right now, so make sure you watch those to get caught up. And I don't want to steal my thunder from that upcoming video, but I will answer a slightly different question here. I can tell you the two characters I would like to see their roles cut from the show, and that would be Masima and Morghese. I don't want them to be cut from the show entirely, but I'd like to see their plotline shortened and resolved far quicker. I actually like the problems Masima causes around the world, and his fanaticism adds to the depth of the world, in my opinion, as well as being kind of the catalyst for a lot of Perrin's uh, plot direction. But I think this plotline could be resolved far quicker and without his involvement with the Sean Chan, for instance. Now, Morghese's plotline uh, could really just be snipped quickly by actually killing her off or eliminating her entire escape to Amador and captivity. I don't know that they're going to do this, and I'm really just kind of answering off the cuff here without too much thought. Uh, but I'd like to see that plotline reduced because it got kind of boring after a while. So Julian Sandar, our tyrant thief catcher himself, asks on Twitter, I love your videos. Great stuff. Well, thanks, Julian. Uh, I always wondered how far they actually travel. How far is it from Falma to Mayen? What is the lesser blight? And how far is it to Shanchan? What's going on in the land of Mad Men? Geography questions, basically. How is it compared to our world? What is the distance from New York to LA and the Westlands, etc.? So this is kind of a loaded question, and I think it's a really interesting topic. Uh, I love thinking about the geography of the world so that we can get an idea of the scale of the world our characters live within. Uh, so let's start with scale. There's a map from the original Wheel of Time companion book that, that gives us some scale when looking at the entire world. And based on the scale we're given here, each of these blocks that you're seeing on screen is essentially a thousand miles. So that means Sean Chan is basically 11,000 miles away from the Westlands. If we compare this to our world, the distance between Indonesia and the coast of Colombia is around 12,300 miles, making the Earth Ocean roughly the same size as the Pacific Ocean. So what about the Westlands? Well, here's a map of the United States laid over top of the Westlands, according to the scale that we're previously given. That is going to give us a rough distance between Mayan and Falma as slightly more than 3,000 miles, which is about the distance from Miami, Florida to Seattle, Washington. Using your example of New York to LA, that is basically the same distance as the IEL waste all the way to Tanchico. The Westlands are slightly larger than the continental United States. So to answer your question about the Lesser Blight, this is the area of the Blight on the continent of Shan Chan. The area is still blighted, but there's almost no shadow spawn as they were eliminated by the Shan Chan. And due to their not being near Shea Ghul, it was not repopulated with shadow spawn. The land of Mad Men, which is basically like Australia in my mind, uh, we don't know a whole ton about, so it's hard for me to answer that question. So we have another question from Twitter, and that is from Brahms, who asks, I would love to know, is there a dragon in every age, or is it just in the second and third ages? I know this not, may not be able to be answered, but I'm just curious. I love your channel, by the way. Well, thanks a lot, Brahms. This is actually a super interesting question that I could devote an entire video to. So let me start by saying that the dragon title is really just a title given to the person fighting the Dark One's forces and leading the, the, the forces of the light in the Age of Legends. And Rand is simply him being reborn to finish the job in the Third Age. But what you may be referring to is the soul that is born in Luce there in Telamon and also into Randall Thor. And does that soul get reborn other times other than what is needed to defeat the Dark One? And the answer here actually appears to be yes. There is a very cool fan theory that actually makes a ton of sense that I will probably do a video about later on, but it states that the false dragon, Guerra Malasan, was actually the reincarnated soul of Luz there in Telamon, and that it was not the right time for him to fight the Dark One, so he was unable to fulfill the prophecies and was not the dragon reborn, but is the reincarnated soul of Luz Theron. 
we see further evidence that this soul was reborn in other ages, as when the Horn of Valyr is sounded in the Great Hunt, Arthur Hawkwing says to Rand that he has fought against Rand times beyond number. This implies that in some versions of their rebirths, they fight against each other. Since we know that this didn't happen in the Age of Legends, and also not in the Third Age, it implies that they are both reborn at other times as well. So while we don't have a definitive answer to your question, I think there's evidence to say that that soul is reborn in other ages. Stephen Gilly asks, is Rand a Mary Sue or Gary Stu? So let's first start by defining what a Mary Sue character is for those that don't know. Mary Sue characters are essentially flawless characters that have no weaknesses, and typically due to this, they're super uninteresting, poorly developed, and too perfect because they lack the realism necessary to be interesting. Superman can sometimes be thought of as a Mary Sue because it's difficult to formulate a villain that could actually ever defeat him. He seems so unbendable in his morals, and because of this, movie adaptations of Superman tend to be difficult to pull off because he's not super relatable. So do I think Rand is a Mary Sue? I don't. He is very, very powerful. It ends the series being borderline godlike. But what sets him apart and makes him the most interesting character in the series, honestly, maybe behind Matt, is that his development is real and he does almost fail multiple times. He's almost killed by the Forsaken many times, only surviving due to others saving him. He absolutely loses his mind during the series. He almost decides to end the world and stop the wheel from turning, effectively doing the Dark One's work for him. He isn't perfect, and because of this, I don't think he can be characterized as a Mary Sue or a Gary Stu. So we'll do one more for this video, and that's going to come from Michael Murphy, who asks, What character did you like at the beginning and hate at the end, light or dark? And two, what character did you hate at the beginning but end up loving at the end? Well, this is a good one, Michael. Uh, so I think hate might be a strong word, but the character that I liked decently well for the first couple books but absolutely despised at the end was Gawain. I think he's one of the most poorly written characters in the novels, uh, with his motivations and actions just being stupid. Um, and to me, kind of out of character from what we knew about him before. In regards to someone I didn't like much at the beginning but loved at the end, I'd say Matt. He was fairly uninteresting until after he's healed from the dagger and stuff, but dang, did he become interesting in the later books. I'd be curious what other people think here. But hey guys, before we end the video, I, I wanted to let you know that the channel is being supported by Audible.com. Seriously, one of the best places you guys can get audiobooks. They are offering a super cool present to my viewers. If you don't already have an Audible account, they're going to give you a free audiobook without any commitment. All you need to do is click the link below and start a one month free trial. You can cancel the subscription before you are ever billed if you choose, but you get to keep the book. I do highly recommend keeping it as I have all of the Wheel of Time books on Audible and you can keep any of the books that you get through your subscription even after you cancel the service. All of the money generated supports the channel, so even signing up for a free trial is going to help support the channel going forward. But hey, thanks again, guys. And before we go, I'd like to do one of these Q&A videos once a month if you guys liked this one. Uh, so go ahead and leave me a few questions down below that I can hit on in the next Q&A. And be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to be notified when I post new videos. And also, please check out the community over on Patreon and consider supporting what we're doing here for as little as a dollar a month. Hey guys, thank you all so much for allowing me to do something that I truly enjoy, and hopefully you guys are getting some enjoyment out of the content. Hey, until next time. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. A mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?